The McDougal Creek fire that destroyed homes in West Kelowna seemed to come out of nowhere, forcing thousands to evacuate. It grew about 20 kilometers in just 12 hours. That's one of the fastest growing wildfires in BC's history. We've seen other destructive fires like this one that move with such speed, people had no choice but to flee from Lytton, BC to Lahaina on Maui. So why do some fires go from spark to inferno so fast? And why do they seem to be getting worse? The McDougal Creek wildfire here in West Kelowna started as a spot fire. It was first discovered August 15th. And over a 24 hour period, it grew from 64 hectares to 68 square kilometers. The night of August 17th, people watched in horror as the fire barreled down the hill towards them, moving at incredible speeds. When I say extreme, what it means is that they are moving faster than we can effectively put firefighting resources on them. Every fire behaves differently, but there are specific conditions that determine how quickly they move and grow. So when we talk about fire and like fire behavior, we always talk about triangles. So topography, fuels and weather. And so there's combinations of topography, fuels and weather that kind of lead to sometimes to aggressive fire behavior. Let's start with perhaps the most important factor in all these fires, weather and often powerful winds. In West Kelowna, wind gusts pushed the fire aggressively towards town, even causing it to jump Lake Okanagan. You could see it moving quite quickly, and then when it started coming down the hill, I mean, with the winds kind of pushing it, that's what sort of allowed it to come down. But we saw aggressive fire behavior, and this is, this is where, you know, the fire itself starts to exhibit some influence on what you're seeing. When a fire starts to generate a lot of energy and a lot of heat, it's actually going to generate wind that pulls the fire along. We had really, really high wind speeds that day, so 50 to 70 kilometers an hour or, or higher with gusts. And when you get these large, aggressive, fires with these big convective columns what's happening is you have a lot of ember transport in the transport of other materials like pine cones branches twigs other sorts of materials that are picked up by that fire into the smoke column or in the wind and then carried long distances and so what we saw with in Kelowna uh, on August 17th with those wind speeds was ember transport across the lake which you know is maybe a, a kilometer or two wide where it, where it jumped the lake and so those embers and those materials got into the fuels on the other side of the lake and, and started the fires that we saw in Lake Country and on the Kelowna side versus West Kelowna. We now know that in Lahaina, the fire that destroyed the town was exacerbated by strong easterly trade winds whipped up by Hurricane Dora. That fire grew by a mile a minute. That's as fast as a car driving on a highway. Wind is everything. It's really that last piece of the puzzle because it fuels oxygen to the fire. So just the same way as if you had a campfire and you're getting down to blow on the embers to really start that fire, the, the wind acts as that, that really driving force behind fires. Next up in our fire triangle is topography. Fires can move very fast uphill. Heat rises, preheating fuels that are further up on a slope, igniting them quickly once the fire reaches them. Fires really like to move up steep slopes, but in the case of the West Kelowna wildfires, we saw the fire actually moving down slope. And I think that really had to do from the, the winds pushing at that fire's back down the slope. But we also were experiencing some issues of probably rolling debris and embers rolling down that slope and creating small spot fires underneath, which were then burning up and connecting to that main, that main fire source. Topography played a huge role in the destruction of Lytton. The village sits inside a canyon. The day of the fires, temperatures soared to 49.5 degrees Celsius. High winds raced down into Lytton, acting like a blowtorch on the landscape. All it took was a spark for almost the entire village to go up in flames. It's coming this way fast. Let's get out of here. The Lytton Fire Station camera caught one last image of the fire heading into town just before a majority of the village was destroyed. The last piece of the fire triangle is fuel. Lytton, Lahaina and West Kelowna all experienced sustained droughts before these fires struck. So there was lots of dry material from trees to shrubs, grass and pine cones ready to burn. One thing we can control is the amount of available fuel. 
Doing more prescribed burns can get rid of dry material that can burn. So our treatments need to be on the scale of the fires that we're seeing. So if we're seeing 5,000 hectare fires, and some of our treatments should be 5,000 hectares or more. So it's that pattern that we need to create across the landscape, and we just need to do a lot more of it. Um, and we don't have forever. The way things are changing quite rapidly with climate change and the creation of more fuels and the accumulation of more fuels is we have a limited window. The people who have fought and studied fires worry these kinds of aggressive wildfires are becoming more severe and more frequent because our climate is changing. When topography, fuel and weather come together, fires can get so dangerous even firefighters may be forced to retreat. Uh, to be honest, sometimes it just becomes too dangerous to actually have personnel on that type of fire where, where you're seeing that kind of fire behavior. And as a wildland firefighter, those are the ones where we start talking about making sure you have an escape route, making sure you have a way to get out of the fire into a safety zone in case you had to get away from that fire. When I was a wildland firefighter, it seems like fires are different. They're more aggressive uh, and it's becoming a more dangerous sort of thing sometimes to action some of these fires. And so I think like there's an urgency with that, that if we're going to live with this type of these type of fires on the landscape, um, you know, how do we do that? The McDougal Creek fire destroyed or damaged almost 170 structures. In Lytton, an entire village was lost and two elderly people died. In Lahaina, the death toll is 115 people and many more are still missing. Fast moving fires are dangerous to the people who live on these landscapes. As our climate changes and as fires like these become more common, the ways we mitigate and fight them will have to adapt to.